Jenna Laird leads things off. Honnold hit the home run yesterday. That was her fourth of the season with Linestock in the circle. And it's nothing and one. Gallagher, two-run double yesterday in the uh, run rule victory at 12-3. And you mentioned 70 plus degrees. The wind should be a factor, and that is something important to note at Bogle Park today. It is gusting as high as 32 miles an hour, and it has not slowed down since uh, we first got to the ballpark some two and a half hours ago here. Laird three hits in the series, three for seven, has scored twice and driven in two. It's one and two. What impressed you the most about Morgan Linestock on Friday? I think it was the mix of her changeup, how she was able to distinguish speed, location. She's She's got a filthy drop ball, right? That's her bread and butter. That's what makes her so deadly. You can see the light, the late life, the break on that pitch. But what set her apart in game one was the fact that Courtney Dyfel chose to go to that off speed a little bit more than what we're used to seeing. She can protect that pitch often, but when she goes there, it's useful. Knocked down by Halverson over to first, not in time, and an infield hit for Laird. Leads things off for the Tigers here in the top of the first. Already, you're seeing a difference from the top of the order. Johnson with a lot of speed for Mizzou, testing up the middle of the infield, able to see the pitch deep. That, Roy, is the adjustment that Mizzou is going to have to make on a drop ball. They cannot be early on that pitch. They've got to see the ball deep and take it up the middle of the field. Dangerous bat of Honnold. Fouls off the first pitch. Laird at first with 12 stolen bags this year. You see Honnold's numbers now, a senior. West Des Moines, Iowa. Coach Anderson telling us this week, doesn't talk a lot, doesn't have to at times. In the dirt and a good stop by Miller. Well, it was a record attendance yesterday for game two. 3,885 fans for a facility and a fan base that is known for turning out here with the Hogs. Outside, it's two and one. They get rowdy here at Bogle Park. Festive. Berm is packed as you would expect on a spring day in early April. And the 2 1 slow roller over to first. Ellis up with it quickly. She'll get the out there. Advancing to second is Laird. Marissa Anderson here, number six. And Como, you take a look at. What changed yesterday? Those runs, there were a lot of free passes issue. There was a wild pitch that got the scoring party started for Mizzou. So they got a little assistance, but certainly more effective up to bat. Popped up shallow center, racing. Alverson can't catch up to it. Here's the throw over to third, and in safely is Laird. Advancing to second. In the meantime, is Gallagher. Well, a lot happening there. Halverson gave it all she could, racing over from second. Unable to make the catch. You can still see the early timing. This is off the end of the bat of Gallagher, just way out on the front side of this off-speed pitch. And a good chase by Halverson. I am shocked that this play at third is not going to be under review. Throw there in time, but I do see the hand gets in. It's a nice slide by Laird. She's centimeters at times. Big A-B early in this one. Here Daly digs in. Two for five in the weekend, it's driven in three. Base hit here can make it an early 2-0 ball game. And Linestock struggling to find that rhythm that we saw on Friday in that fifth complete game. Daly grew up in Jefferson City, coming to Columbia. Watch Mizzou softball. Anderson said she's in the lineup to drive in runs. Perfect opportunity here. Hitters count. Walked her on four straight. First walk issued by Linestock. And now the bases are loaded for Mizzou. And 
Here comes Katie Chester. Batting average has risen nearly 100 points since last year. A chance to do some significant damage early. Nothing and one. This is a 500 hitter with bases loaded. Odds looking pretty good. This is exactly who you'd want to have the bat in their hands in this type of situation, a less than two out opportunity. And that win, Aaron blowing straight out towards center field. She's got four home runs on the season. You're still continuing to see Mizzou not quite square up the timing of line stock. And when you think about how these runners have worked their way on these swings. The contact hasn't been necessarily solid. Been out front. Linestock battles back and records the second out of the frame. This time via strikeout. Head coach Courtney Dyfel is unafraid to throw the same pitch back to back. This is two off speeds back to back. She gets the off-speed swing from Kara Daly and goes Saint, excuse me, Chester, and goes straight back to the same location and timing. That's just fearless pitch calling right there from Coach Dyfel. What a moment now for Abby Hay, the freshman, in her first career home run here in game one on Friday. That kind of opened the floodgates for yesterday for Mizzou in game two. Columbia, Missouri native. Want to know the count with Missouri in game two, and it kind of did. Two and one. Einstock with a deep breath. Layered at third. Gallagher at second. Daly at first base for Mizzou. Just underway in Fayetteville. Critical series in the SEC. Two strikes. Linestock a strike away from getting out of. This is a, a critical inning, too, for Linestock. Right now, she's trying just to settle in, first, learning her strike zone, but two, is she seeing a team that's going to make an adjustment on what they saw in game one? If not, stick with what you did in game one, right? It was successful. Why fix anything that's not broken? But for Mizzou, are they going to see a different approach? Is it going to be the same type of off-speed challenges early in counts? Are they going to see that drop ball early in the zone? It's a game of chess. Hey, two hits on the weekend. Rolls to Camel over to first in time, and Linestock escapes. The Tiger of offensive production. Run scoring double, rather, as Reagan Johnson leads things off for the Hawks. Johnson, Kramer, and Ellis. Infield steps in a couple of paces against the speedster, Reagan Johnson. With McCann in the circle, Marissa McCann, former 5A player of the year in the state of Arizona, though she grew up a Missouri fan, born in Columbia. Johnson, a sophomore, 385 on the year, perfect in the stolen base department. When she gets on, look out. Fastest player Courtney Dyfel has ever coached. Her nine seasons here. What was your speed like at Oklahoma? <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't say it was super fast, but I wasn't super slow. I let the let the legs work for me every now and then. Three balls and a strike. Can the freshman back-to-back -back SEC Freshman of the Week awards? Not a surprise, Arizona. It's just fun to say surprise. Slap foul. What do you like about what she brings to the circle? I can tell you what Coach Larissa Anderson loves about McCann is the fact that she can rely on this arm. Extremely spinny, has a deadly off-speed pitch. She looked good yesterday against Arkansas, an inning and a third. She likes to be challenged. This is one that Coach Anderson has had a lot of fun with in practice, just getting to know her dynamic. She likes to be challenged. It was funny hearing Coach Anderson talk about her development and evolution as a pitcher here. And 
She said, you know, early in her career, she wanted me to yell at her every pitch just to really keep her focused. And she said, I, I can't do that every time. You've got to find a way to be in your own head, to really keep yourself in check every single pitch. And she's found a way to do that. Seven pitches in, a full count. Eighth pitch of the AB coming up for Johnson. That was a funny way for her to describe that early experience with her freshman hurler. Johnson's one for seven in the series, has scored a run. Getting nearly 400 near the top of the order. At the top and a strikeout. Johnson swing straight through it. Now the Courtney Dipole effect, we talked about this Friday. After a loss, going all the way back to 2020, they come back with a vengeance. You look at that run differential, and in 56 games, they've won 45 occasions. That is getting the job done and sharpening every tool that you have coming after a setback. Go back to her. Back-to-back -back SEC championships, including a couple in the regular season, one in the tournament. See Kramer's numbers this year. It really explains, I think, how she coaches, how she approaches her program. Even talking to her about this team specifically, about what they've done so well. They've gotten tested this year, and she was very, very humble in admitting that, that this team has hit some bump in the roads early, but the fact that they have really stayed collected and poised Popped up, shallow center, and drifting over from second is Gallagher for out number two. Up the middle. Here's Bree Ellis. Well, if you're Mizzou, this is where you want number 77. When you want number 77 coming up. Backs clean, and with two outs. There's 13 home runs, including one Friday, pacing Arkansas this year. Hammered foul. Straight away. Someone that leads this team both in her play and her vocal contribution. She's a presence here for the Razorbacks. And the bulk of her production coming in league play too, hitting over 450. Straight away center and Honnold tracking. A one, two, three frame for the Hogs as we head to the top of the second scoreless. A bit of success recently. It's a tough spot to be, but you got to imagine this is a pretty cool moment for her. It had to be, and she just got finished playing. So coming back to this facility, a special moment yesterday and a warm welcome as well. And the Hogs faithful in front of that record crowd. Dodge leads things off. Let's see if Linestock settles in a little bit more. You see Dodge's numbers. Transfer from Northern Iowa, the former Surrey Valley Conference Player of the Year. Has adjusted well in the SEC. It took some time, according to Larissa Anderson. Just a reminder, everybody's got a scouting report on you here. We're going to try to take away what you do best right away. Two and two. I think a big difference, too, yesterday for Arkansas was pitching. They gave up nine free bases, six walks, and three hit by pitches. Through 132 pitches compared to only 78 from Mizzou. So just an all-around efficient day from Mizzou's staff and a, a laborious day, I think, for Arkansas in the circle. Off speed, hard to the plate, and strikeout number two for Morgan Linestock. Linestock flipping the script on that in game three so far. The changeup is back with vengeance. We saw it so deadly in game one against the Tigers, and she's brought it back here against Mizzou in game three. I was curious. That was a question that I had kind of written down for myself is that's what makes three game series so tough is that you face sometimes arms three times. This is the second time now. The Missouri has faced line stock. Were we going to see a different style? 
from line stock. And so far, it's been pretty consistent. It's still the drop ball. It's still the changeup. Why fix something that's not broken? Complete game in game one Friday. I would tend to agree. And she lives in that lower part of the zone, like what we just saw on that strikeout of Dodge. Crenshaw behind in the count one and two. Hitting three official at bats this weekend. Julia Crenshaw, Gatorade Softball Player of the Year back in 2021. It was in the Show Me States. Strikeout number three. Now four in a row retired by Morgan Leinstock. You know, this was something that Coach Anderson talked about in detail with us coming into Fayetteville was the challenge of the off-speed. Their series against Baylor exposed the off speed. They have struggled on that pitch consistently all season long. And we had even asked her too, Roy, okay, well, if you know that, how are you trying to clean this up with your group? And the struggle with, with Mizzou is their lack of the ability to have an intense practice. <laughs> They've been on the road, they're tired. They have had so much travel over the past month and a half. It's been tough to get home on their turf and have a really in-depth practice to clean any of this up. Nothing in two to Kaylee Langer. Just grabbed a piece. Langer hitting 313 on the year. One for two this weekend. Liberty, Missouri native. It's a Missouri program that has reached the NCAA tournament 16 straight years. Ranked in the top 15 once again. A changeup requires so much practice, and I know at least for me back when I played it, what I would want to do to work on that pitch is face face my own arms. I want to see live pitching and practice. Let's have our pitching staff throw to our batters. But it can be so tough to do specifically at this point in the season. You're wanting to give your arms a rest after pitching all weekend long. You're trying to find time to allow your entire team to recuperate, to recover, to take a breath. But you're also trying to keep the train on the tracks. Full count and a good take by Langer. As now we're seeing Linestock has bounced a few up there. Back half of this AB. Payoff pitch on the way once again. High and tight to Langer. Ball four. Linestock thought it was a strikeout. And instead, she issues her second walk. More importantly, that brings us back to the top of the order, Aaron. Mm. Man, you can see the fist pump. You can see how much Linestock wants that call. And I got to tell you, as a hitter, I, I'm not leaving that in an umpire's hands, although it falls into Langer's favor there. Wow, tough pitch to take. Lair to base hit her first time up, stayed in the infield. 385 on the season. Langer at first. She does have good speed. And softly hit to second as Halverson retreats to retire the side. Bottom of the second coming up, still scoreless. And winking around your house. I like don't want to imagine that, and I don't want my young daughters to yeah, find that like, out. Plug your ears. Don't listen. They would be all over that. Dad wouldn't. Kennedy Miller will lead things off four, five, and six. Miller without a hit in the series. Would love to change that. 391 on the year. Talented freshman is Miller from Georgetown, Texas. Came into the weekend hitting 415. Straight up in the air. Almost in the middle of the circle now drifting over. Daly 
makes the grab from third. Coming up Friday night right here on SEC Network. Something to say afterwards. Georgia came back at one at three to two. A lot of people talking about that on social media. What's up with all the controversial plays at the plate recently? Well, there was Whoa. one last night in, wow. in Austin. Did you see? I, well, I know Did you I saw see it. it. <laughs> Shame on me for asking. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We saw a lot of stuff happen in that game. We've seen a lot of stuff happen this whole weekend with the play of reviewing or challenging runners leaving early. It gets we, a little exhaustive it, at times. Is but that you fair? know what? That was a, that could have been a pivotal shift in that game had the challenge not been made between OU and Texas with the runner leaving. I mean, that would have been a four to one ball game going into the seventh. Swatted right field over the head of Langer all the way to the wall. Campbell dives into second safely. And a fist bump. First hit of the afternoon for Arkansas. And the Hawks in business here in the second. Coming into this weekend, 50% of her hits are home runs. I mean, it's just unbelievable the type of impact that she has on this team when she makes solid contact. This is opposite field double. It's exactly how you would want to time up an arm like McCann in the circle to see the ball deep, hit it where it's thrown. That is high IQ hitting. Gamble does it so well. Kelly Halverson pops it up softly to short. Easy play for Laird for the second out. So after the rocket launch by Gamble all the way to the wall, Halverson retired on one pitch, and it all comes down to Carter. Senior Nia Carter wearing number three in the start in right field. She had a heck of a day yesterday in game two. Triple and RBI. On the outside corner, McCann settles in. I mean, to me, the triple was one of the more exciting plays in softball. Enough. That's a statement. But you're right, it is impressive. You've got to have the location of that hit as well as the speed to match it up. It's a, it's a hard thing to do in our game. Rubber match between Arkansas and Missouri. Winner of this game will take the series. Swatted over to first, knocked down beautifully by Hay. She'll step on the base to a two to one victory by the Horns. Aaron Miller, Roy Philpott, as Mizzou's back up to bat in the top of the third inning. You know something about that rivalry, winning two national championships in Norman. What is it like watching? <laughs> It's uh, it's nostalgia. My heart's like beating out of my chest watching that game last night. But I can tell you firsthand experience how tough it is to play in Austin. That's a very hostile environment. It's loud. The fans are rowdy. You hear a lot of talking. I was an outfielder, so you got fans all up against the fence that are right in your ear. I mean, it is a tough place to play, and you've got to tip your cap to Texas. They brought their best stuff. That was a a heck of a matchup last night. Came down to the very last pitch, last out. 2-0 the count to Honnold. Takes low and away, and I mean, you can understand. You know, you play, you win the national championships, you get a little anxious watching. A little bit. Because you're you a fan can't help now. It. I know, you just can't help it. You want the bat in your hand. You want to help out the team. 3-0 <laughs> the count, line stock out of the zone again, and Honnold aboard for the first time today. On four straight, that'll be the third walk issued by Morgan Leinstock. It's pretty cool to think that both of those teams will be entering into this conference next year. The SEC getting stronger and bigger. Never thought I'd say those words, but it's true. It definitely is true. You bring in two-story programs like that. Maddie Gallagher. Ellis was halfway down the first baseline on that. First potential swing. Gallagher a hit in the first inning, her third of the weekend, and Mizzou's dugout coming to life. Oh, 
Five straight out of the zone for Linestock. And softly hit to short. Retreating was Priggy. And the double play. This is such a good view here of just trying to understand the base running with Honold at first base just way too wide. The leadoff, not understanding where that ball is headed, and, and I get it, you got to hang out just far enough to see that ball down, but immediately when you see Priggy make contact, you got to get back to the bag. 19 double plays turned this season for the Hogs. That is third in the SEC. Briggy making her ninth start of the year. Just her 13th game overall. And had that one played absolutely perfectly. Such a tough play as a base runner. You got to get off far enough to where if that ball does get down, you're not getting picked off at second base. But being so reactionary, the second you see that that ball is going to have a play made to find your way back to first, that is such a tough play as a base runner. Obviously changes the entire complexion of this inning. Maybe this game, line stock the strikeout, her fourth. And new life in the circle for numbers eight, nine, and one. Two up first for the Hawks in a scoreless game, bottom of the third. Eventful weekend around the conference. And the first pitch strike is Hedgecock. Gets her first A-B here in game three. At her fourth home run of the season on an absolute laser out to left field on Friday. 250 on the year. That homer, one of two hits this weekend. Ryland Hedgecock off speed. In the inner half, nothing in two. This is an arm against Arkansas where they're going to have to pick a speed, and they're going to have to sit on it the whole way. The differential in her hard drop ball and her changeup is too devastating to sit between both. you got to pick a game plan. Out in front, down on three straight. The second strikeout recorded by Marissa McCann. We mentioned an eventful weekend around the SEC. South Carolina toppling Mississippi State. Battle of top 25 teams already. Georgia over Tennessee. And what a series that has been in Knoxville. Game two between LSU and Florida. Game three tomorrow night, of course, on SEC Network in Kentucky. And a close one in College Station against 14th ranked Texas A&M with a 1-0 lead. This is a team that knows how to game plan well. Talking to both Courtney Dyfel, head coach here at Arkansas, and knowing DJ Gasso's approach, first year hitting coach here at Arkansas. They take pride in their prep. What DJ Gasso has brought to this program is the mastery of game plans. And it's specific to each situation, each hitter. It's not a blanket approach. It's tailored to each body type, how their, their body uses movement through the zone. His style is so specific with, with each one of these young women. That's what makes him so good at his job. And again, it's the prep work. It's watching film. It's preparing for the arms that they're going to see. How each young woman matches up against the arm in the circle. And right now, the game plan is pick a speed, sit a speed the entire way. First A.B. of the weekend for Priggy. Adding 118 and takes low. Two balls and two strikes. And a great play moments ago. Doubling up Honold over at first. A play like that can change the whole vibe of a game potentially of this series. Awkward swing over to Hay who dives. Made the tag on Priggy. A full extension there. Great effort by Abby Hay. Just early, this is off the end of the bat. Again, a timing issue here from Priggy. She legs this out, and it's the tag from Hay. 
just in time before crossing first base. And continuing to disrupt the timing of Arkansas is why McMahon, McMahon has had so much success in the circle so far through two and two thirds. And full command so far for McCann. Back to the top of the order in Reagan Johnson. One for eight this weekend, a score to run. Strikeout. It's a strikeout victim rather in the first inning. The addition too of Danielle Gibson Horton. She is alumni of Arkansas adding to this staff as well. You can see her standing at the mouth of the dugout. The, the synergy between the addition of Danielle and DJ Gasso I think has been a huge addition to this coaching staff. They both have similar styles and approaches to hitting, but talking to Courtney Dyfel, they both have a very unique approach of delivering that insight to this team. She being an alumni, Danielle adding a, a really interesting perspective to this group, connecting to these girls in a much different way. Ball and two strikes. Well, Johnson just applies so much pressure on your infield, knowing how quickly she can get down the line at first. You see Hay and also Daly stepping in closer in case one gets quickly in their direction because you have to respond and react quickly. Daly did that Friday in game one. Two and two. I can only imagine having Mary Half on staff for Mizzou adds a competitive edge to this weekend as well. Can't right? hurt. It can't hurt. She knows how this program preps. She knows how they approach matchups, especially in conference play. And from a pitching perspective, understanding the pitch calling of Courtney Dyfel. Hit to Daly, who makes another great play, but the throw is wide. Johnson racing for second. We'll get there easily, and with two outs, the Hawks have another runner in scoring position. Well, Daly did a great job to track it down quickly at the hot corner and knew that Johnson was barreling down the first baseline. This is the pressure that Reagan Johnson applies. Look at how this ball is fielded across the body. She's got to stretch and torque her body almost 180 degrees. Daly throws an errant throw to first base, and she's able. Reagan Johnson to snag an extra 60 feet. That is why it is so hard to defend speed. So tough. You mentioned how she had to twist and turn to get the ball out. She did it quickly. Yeah. And by the time the ball got to first, Johnson was already there. And Gallagher is ready and waiting on the back from Coach Anderson. As she says, use that momentum. Do a little spin there and quicken the release instead of working against the momentum of your body. And that's something as a third baseman you work tirelessly and practice on. It's Katie Chester, a big cut, it's nothing in two. Struck out in the first. One hit in the weekend, 276 on the year. Does have some pop in the bat. Coach Anderson indicating to us before the series, Katie really wants to be in that four hole. Sharply to Gamble, up with it quickly for the first half. That brings us to Abby Hay. Well, we told you about her first career home run on Friday. Columbia, Missouri, Rockbridge High School. Her father played baseball at Mizzou. Mom was a golfer at the University of Missouri. Now making her seventh career start for young career. Sharply up the middle, stabbed by Priggy. Off of her knees, not in time. Third hit of the weekend for Abby Hay. This is a bat that's starting to really get consistent at the plate. What a perfect time in the season two to see the ball so well. Conference play heating up. You're starting to gear up for postseason, the road ahead. Especially this portion of the order. We've seen Mizzou do a lot of damage in the heart of their lineup this weekend. And part of that production has been Abby Hay. First hit for the Tigers since the first. Well, seven hits and seven career starts. Abby Hay will take that.
Nothing in one to Dodge. And Maya Dodge, the transfer with three home runs on the year. Passionate player, according to her head coach, Larissa Anderson. Here, and the other thing we talked about Friday, and you've mentioned the fatigue and what it's like, the grind of this time of year with yeah. conference play, right in the heart of everything happening. Mizzou had a midweek game against SEMO, Southeast Missouri. And they were supposed to play two. They elected only play one. Speaking of how they're trying to change things up, Gamble again over to first. Not in time to turn two. Hannah Gamble, incredible fielding at the hot corner. Did not have much time to react, but came up brilliantly in that sequence. A pinching in, you can see the momentum of Gamble. Takes a step, keeps the body low, gloves this, and immediately knows where she's going to go. No hesitation. Dodge board on the fielder's choice at 5-4. Here's Crenshaw. State champion and javelin in high school. Loves to take a large number of pitches. Not going to really offer at that first pitch. Winning a title. Gotta love that. There's gotta be some crossover there, right? Overarm strength, shoulder strength, force. You mentioned torque. I'm thinking oh, a lot yeah, of torque. Oh, yeah, the torque for javelin. sure. It's softly this time to Gamble, and she is up to the challenge once again. Hey, aboard with Circle and kind of what you've seen so far. What do you want to see change moving forward? Well, I'd like us to level up a little bit better. You know, we, we watch a lot of film on her. We know she spins it really well. Um, she relies on, on quick pop-ups, fly-outs, and, and we've done that so far. So hopefully we make that um, adjustment, start line drives, angling down a little bit more, make them, make them earn it a little bit more. Coach, I had a sneaking suspicion we would see line stock again in the circle, and we do. You clearly have a ton of confidence in her. She's looked amazing this weekend. Just, again, go back to the decision to give her the ball here in game three. Well, she's been so steady for us, and, and uh, she had a, a great game against them on Friday night. So, yeah, you're right. We have a ton of confidence in her, and she has a ton of confidence in her, which is the most important thing, and the team has a lot of confidence in her and our entire staff. But she battles. They thrive around her fieriness, and, and she's pitching great right now. So hopefully we can break through first. Coach, we thank you for the weekend and for the fantastic weather in Thank Fayetteville. you. <laughs> you're welcome. I did thank that. You, you're welcome. Good Whoop luck. It. Not sure if she ordered that on one of the uh, – Services that you can order things from of with course, the fantastic quick, weather. The two day, yeah. you know. Not a bad deal. Two day delivery. Here's Brie been. Ellis. Not Couldn't a, ask for anything. There's more, right? there's not a cloud in the sky. It's it's perfect. Was driving back and forth between Faithful and Memphis this weekend and a lot of road signs about the upcoming eclipse. You can't pull off on the side of the road yeah. to view the eclipse, but well, you would love to dial this up if you are in the path of the solar eclipse tomorrow. So I was watching the local news in my hotel last night, and I think I heard there was a, they declared it a, nat, or a, a local emergency for extra food and water because of the amount of tourists coming in. Ellis smacks it foul with home run distance. Wow. Yeah, it was a real thing. That shocked me too. So in 2017, I live in South Carolina. The path of the solar eclipse then went right through our backyard. Mm -hmm. And it was incredibly eerie. It's because very eerie. Right before it hits, like, you just hear everything silent. get silent. Silence. Animals yes. aren't yes. making any noise. No. Like, they know it's coming. And it's this odd kind of yellow amber haze that takes over. It is very scary movie-like. Absolutely. Two balls and a strike to Bree Ellis. Two for seven this weekend. Auburn transfer. Yeah, way. once you go through one solar eclipse, like, yeah. I'm good. I don't need to go like, through another right. one. It was just, great. The part that I that left me kind of scratching my head is I'm like, okay, you've got Walmart headquarters up the road here in Fayetteville, right? Bentonville's right in your backyard. Surely the supplies will not run short. Surely not. Ella sky high all the way back to the track and reaching out. Wow. What a play. Dodge reels it in. He's 
see the deep exhale from McCann in the pitching circle. Dodge, holy cow, this is skied. This is a rise ball that is absolutely launched into the sky high, I mean, not a cloud in the sky. This is a tough ball to read for Dodge. She finds the wall. This is textbook outfield right now. The late jump, beautiful grab. Off the bat, Aaron, wow. that felt like it was going to be hit about 10 feet short of the track. But remember the wind, a straightaway center. It is not slowed down whatsoever since our first pitch about an hour ago. That wind will carry anything drifting in that direction. An extra, who knows, 15 or 20 I feet. I mean, look at the flags. It's blowing directly out of this ballpark. And that's exactly what you saw. It was skied up. I call it a high sky. And as an outfielder, you, you know this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It can be a, a depth perception issue when you don't have clouds. It's hard to get a read in a high sky of where exactly your body needs to be in space. And such a great job by Dodge to find that wall and just park it. Be patient and see that ball into the glove. Wild sequence to record the first out of the inning. Kennedy Miller hooking foul. She knew where the wall was, yeah. and you mentioned it, textbook. It is. You can see the hand. She finds the wall, uses that warning track, and then times the jump just before it hits the wall. It's a really good job. Everybody take a seat. That's how I translated that uh, shushing of the crowd. Miller, the freshman catcher. Ball in a strike. As a hitter, when you see the previous batter just pop one up and it nearly leaves the ballpark, how does that impact your thinking as you dig in? Or does it? I think it depends on who's at the plate. I mean, if it were me, I would probably be looking to drop a bunt. Stun the infield, okay. right? To, to pull in the defense after making them respect a bat like Bree Ellis, who we've seen launch home runs all season long. That would have been her 14th. Had that cleared the wall. Just being savvy about the approach of who you're you're hitting behind. How you can challenge this defense. We really haven't seen Arkansas use a lot of short game. We haven't seen Arkansas challenge the corners with short game against Mizzou yet this weekend. This isn't a team with a ton of speed. I think if we were going to see that be done, it'd be with those first two in the order. Reagan Johnson, Reagan Kramer. Combined is still 18 bases. It's sharply to Daly for the second out. You got to tip your cap to Mizzou defense because they are holding their own. McCann is dealing in the circle. She's giving her defense plays to make, and they are answering. They are answering. After a tough loss in game one, they come out swinging in game two, and it has been a tight ball game. Runs to a minimum, none yet through four. 48 pitches for McCann. She has been sharp today. Daly has been incredible. Games that we've seen this weekend. It's 5-2, an Arkansas win in game one, 12-3, a run roll victory for Missouri yesterday in game two in front of nearly 4,000 fans, a new Bogle Park record, 3,885, the exact number. Great showcase for softball in the SEC. Gamble ripped a double to right field, her first plate appearance. 21 hits on the season, 10 of those have left the ballpark. This just feels like postseason. The atmosphere feels like postseason. What this game means feels like postseason. You can just, you could cut the tension with a knife. It's just so thick. You know that this game means a lot to both of these teams. It's a must win. And separated by just a game in the SEC standings. Foul territory and the shortstop layer calls off daily. What Mizzou has brought here in game three, what we saw from an adjustment standpoint yesterday was being on time. 
That's where they've struggled this season is timing up the off speed. But he's balancing really a, a, an offense that struggled with that pitch paired with that postseason experience. I think it, that's what this team needs as they look to make a postseason stretch, conference play. This is a tough, tough conference to play into. I mean, you just, you can never take a breath. You can never be on autopilot. Three straight out of the zone for line stock. Robin Heron was getting loose in the Arkansas bullpen the entire fourth inning. Langer batting ninth. It'll be 9-1 and 2. Langer, Laird, and Hoddle for the Tigers. who have only managed three hits so far. Hawks have just two in a scoreless game. The top of the fifth inning. Well, you were thinking the same thing I was because we got maybe halfway home in the third and looking around, thinking about what's to come next month and getting a little deeper into postseason play. It feels like the postseason. Swatted foul, three and two. It's always too interesting to hear coaches' dynamics. And Coach Anderson was really honest with us just about her and, and Coach Cottrell worked together. She said we balance each other really well. He's extremely calm and collected, kind of the yin to the yang type, type of deal. And where I can get heated and I can get passionate and loud, he is able to be the steady water of this coaching staff. And that's been really important to her. Payoff pitch over to third through the wickets into left field. Langer aboard on a tough play at the hot corner. And the leadoff batter reaching for Mizzou the second time today. This is the second time we've seen Mizzou start off an inning with a base hit. This one challenging Gamble at third base, who's been so good at the hot corner. Top of the order, Jenna Laird squares to bunt, sends it foul. One for two, 381 on the season. The New York native and the SEC freshman of the year in 2021. And looking to advance Langer. This time swinging away, off of line stock over to Gamble. And advancing to... Langer in scoring position for Alex Honnold. Not in front, nothing in one. Honnold two hits in the series, 0-2. I feel like Mizzou's coaching staff has been strengthened in a lot of different ways. Molly Jacobson, her first season with Mizzou as well, assisting with pitching. There's been a lot of strength, a lot of movement in the coaching, the coaching trail this year. Hammer down the right field line, drifting into foul territory, almost to the wall, and hops over. We're going to rule Langer's initial knock, a base hit. He's winning also, all the scoring for that. It feels like a lot of alumni returning to alma maters as well. Caleb Broad going back to Alabama. Fale Palima, who's now Fale Steele, married, going back to Oklahoma. You see. Danielle Gibson Wharton coming back to her alma mater. Nothing like returning home. Yeah. Good vibes in the dirt. And a good stop by Miller. That'll get Langer back to second quickly. Who's going to break through first? A scoreless game in the top of the fifth inning. Rubber match between these two rivals, Arkansas and Missouri. Talk to Coach Anderson about the rivalry, quote unquote. She said it's respectful. Served in the center field. That'll get down for a base hit. And Mizzou grabs the early lead at 1-0. Hoddle comes through in the clutch. 
A home run yesterday. She'll give Mizzou a 1-0 lead today in game three. Well, Honold had a lot of impact in game two's win with a home run and two RBI, and now striking first blood here with the RBI single up the middle of the field, just over the glove of Priggy at shortstop. Honold at first for Maddie Gallagher in the dirt from line stop. Tigers are 26 and 1 when scoring first this season under Larissa Anderson. Now a brief conversation in the circle. Leah Dom, home plate umpire, talking with Morgan Linestock. Texas beating Oklahoma 2 to 1. That's not a final, is it? That's a final. Oh boy. Who, who climbs to the number one spot then next oh boy. week? That's my question. Oh boy. First series you and I have worked together, and it happens to be one in which Oklahoma loses not <laughs> once, but twice. It's not your fault. <laughs> I get a little superstitious. You know, this matchup would be a needle mover, too. If Arkansas is able to walk away with a win here, it would absolutely move around in the rankings. Yeah, Mizzou ranked 11th, Arkansas at number 19. That conversation about Leinstock potentially rubbing the ball in the dirt a little bit. Soft liner, center field, and there's Johnson. Diving down, makes a clean grab. Huge catch by Johnson, able to find the green here, reading. This is the toughest ball to read, where you've got to come straight forward to decide. Am I going belly first on the dive? Am I going figure four? Am I seeing this ball down? And she makes the correct choice to glove this ball for the out. But how about Mizzou? I think the contact is starting to get just a bit more solid. They're timing up the pitch from line stock more consistently. Honnold steals second, now 11 of 12 in the stolen base department. She raises into scoring position. That's her 11th stolen base of the year. 11 of 12 in that department. That'll change the complexion of this AB for Kara Daly, potentially. Walked in the first, struck out her second time up. Nothing in two now. Pressure mounting here at Bogle Park for both sides. Mizzou responds. The lid lifting run, one nothing. Served over to Gamble, and that is ruled foul. And the only run coming on a ball hit sharply. Gamble has probably made that play nine out of ten times this weekend. That put Langer aboard and then finally driven home by Honnold. It has been a very close series between these two top 20 programs. Weinstock went the distance in game one. More challenging outing today. Only given up three total runs through Nearly 12 complete innings. And another strikeout. Between Mizzou and the Hogs. Aaron Miller, Roy Philpott. And the Razorbacks coming up to bat, trailing for the first time here. one nothing. Halverson, Carter, and Hedgecock. Slated to hit. Kylie Halverson. Two for five this weekend. Starting at second base once again, batting in that six hole. Started every game this year. Power has been up this season. Second year in Fayetteville after three at South Dakota State. Former Summit League Player of the Year there in 2021. Basically started every single game in her Arkansas career since coming down from Brookings. Been frustrated a little bit at the plate early this season, but has let the 
the game come back to her. Hammer, deep left field. The wind's going to push it way out of here, and we're tied in one. Eighth home run of the season for Kylie Halverson. Right on cue. Right on cue. What you're seeing, the joy, the smile, just the atmosphere, the aura that she has in the game right now. It's exactly what Courtney Dyfel told us about the evolution of this season for Kylie Halverson. She pressed early in the year, swinging uncharacteristically out of the zone, just pressing at the plate, and has allowed the joy of this game to find her again. And that was about as free and joyous of a swing, I think, as we've seen from her all weekend. Calling the Hogs in Fayetteville. Halverson gives you so much flexibility. She's played first, she's played second, played well both positions. This one giving a ride to deep right field, and Arkansas takes the lead. Nia Carter. First home run of the season. Were we timing her rounding the bases? Because I think she sprinted. <laughs> I think she sprinted home. But I think the honesty is that she's been struggling a little bit lately. Got hit hard against Tennessee. Was exposed a bit on location. And right now, Mizzou needing her to throw lights out. Back-to-back -back jacks have changed this game and potentially this series. Hedgecock. The home run back in game one on Friday. Struck out her first time up today. Well, Bree Ellis gave us that first hint that hey, anything hit deep has got a chance to exit Bogle Park with that win. I don't know that Halverson needed any assistance with her shot. Carter perhaps did a little bit her first home run of the year and has died down a little bit in the meantime. But Aaron, a little surprised we haven't seen more of that kind of action today, given the conditions. Sharply deep in the hole, it's short layer. Fields and fires. First out. Spencer Priggy. Ninth start of the season. Done a nice job at shortstop today. So set up at the back of the box. When wisping towards right, Priggy hits it towards left. Who wants it? Left fielder does. That's Dodge. It's been special out there this afternoon. That'll bring us back to the top of the order with two outs. Johnson's one for two. It's also started every game for 23. Crimson and cream today. These are moments too, I think, for Krings that she needs. These are <laughs> these are pressure filled reps. This is an experienced arm that's going to have to be leveraged late in the season if they're going to make a postseason run. Slap foul. To find that groove, find the confidence, the control, just the command in the circle that she knows that she has. She's gotten tested this year, and that's just part of being a pitcher. Right, the nature of the beast. You're not always going to be perfect. You're going to get tested. You're going to get hit at times. Right now, just trying to settle back into who she is on the mound. Big, big pitch for her from Coach Anderson has been the changeup. At times, she, she just leaves it a bit high. She can keep that ball low on the off speed. See where that location is right there. It's low spin, off speed at the knees. She's able to get the bite. But at times, that pitch is just left too elevated, and that's when it's hit hard. Here we talked about the pressure that Reagan Johnson puts on 
These corner infielders. She finishes her swing and feels like she's halfway down the line at first. Just right through it. We saw the error from Daly back in the third inning against Reagan Johnson. And on a tough play, for sure. That one, Ping Kramer, who's waiting to hit in the on-deck circle. She appears to be okay. And Courtney Dyfel all smiles walking down. I think this hit her directly on the Evo shield, right on the elbow. It does. Thank goodness for that Evo shield, yeah. my goodness. We saw one carom off of line stock. A circle. That one gets through. And then off the back of Johnson trying to get to first. And let's see. I thought Crenshaw may have caught that cleanly. Apparently she did not. This is a tough one because Reagan Johnson does own the runner's lane. And you're trained. If you're racing to first base, you're trying to get in the way as you're watching first base receive that ball in hopes that this may happen, that you may intercept the throw. The throw, she is right over the chalk line. And really now the field is upheld. I'm at a loss there, Roy. I really am. I'm stumped. Lived up to that feeling. Claire Callahan will pinch hit. And it's nothing in one. Callahan in the five spot. Freshman from Columbus, Georgia. Hammer, straightaway center, playing it that one perfectly was Reagan Johnson. On the move, on the run, and no problem. Anna Kamazin, now your new right fielder. First time we've seen her today. Sun barreling down in Fayetteville. Perfect Sunday afternoon. We had the band, the Hawk Wild band in the house Friday. I'll be talking about that. I'll be talking about that, that for a long time. That was one of the time. coolest things I've seen in a long time. Off of one hop to second, and Halverson was there. And the discipline from Halverson to stay low. That was a hot shot, a one hopper into the glove. There's a reason I did not play infield, and it was because of stuff like that. I'd have been dodging out of the way of that thing. You'd be retreating before oh, it got bye -bye. there. bye-bye. Right? <laughs> Here's Dodge. Made an outstanding play in left field, potentially robbing Briellis of her 14th home run of the season. 0 for 2 today, up to bat. Anderson said she's probably one of the most competitive players on our team this year. Off speed, it stays high. Mic'd up Monday, tomorrow, LSU in Florida at 7 Eastern down in Gainesville. Game three of that series. One and two. Off speed just has been so so money for line stock all weekend. It went the distance in game one Friday. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Has her team out in front by a run. On Sunday, it's two and two. Dodge in search of her first hit this weekend. That would be a fantastic time. in front and into foul territory. Line stock, five and two thirds innings, five hits, just the one run, three walks, five strikeouts. 
was challenged early as Mizzou left the bases loaded in the first. Settled in. And it's been exactly what Coach Courtney Dipole hoped for. Crowd comes to life in the 2-2. Did she offer? She did. Strikeout number six in Arkansas for the game escapes you. Well, great crowd, great energy and atmosphere at Bogle Park this weekend. Two to one ball game. Arkansas, the home team, would love to add an insurance run or two here. Going hog wild in Fayetteville. Two, three, and four. Kramer, Ellis, and Miller. Heart of the order. The Razorbacks. Hit softly to shallow right, battling the sunshine. It'll be Langer for the first out. Now, Krings has come into the circle, done a nice job to settle things down for Mizzou. Yeah, I mentioned just the importance of this rep for her, the outing at this portion in the season, how she's been tested just so far. I think, again, just trying to figure out her flow, her groove. Historically, she's been a force. Bree Ellis has been a force, nearly left the ballpark in her last A.B. Homered Friday, two hits on the weekend. Officially 0 for 2 this afternoon. <laughs> told you about her father, played football at Rice. We told you about her dog, Hank, named after Hank Williams Jr. Back on Friday. Great personality. Coach Dyfel said she's so fun all the time. Her personality is outspoken. There's a look at Hank. <laughs> Auburn transfer settles in. One and two. Well, it's interesting to think that maybe the entire series came down to our fifth inning today. I think that stresses the importance, too, here for Arkansas to get another insurance run because Mizzou has looked good. They've adjusted well at the plate against Linestock. I feel like they've really started to barrel up the ball more consistently against her off speed. Ellis stays alive. That was coming right for you. <laughs> Weekend in Fayetteville in the heart of conference play. As we start to think about the postseason and all that is set to come in the ensuing weeks. Two teams separated by just a game in the SEC standings. Zoo trying to win its third straight series against their rivals. Arkansas in search of that first series victory since way back in 2018. Seems like about four lifetimes ago. Good take by Ellis, and the count pushes full. Lynn has died down completely for the moment. That is a rare sight to see. Upstairs, Ellis is aboard with one out. First walk issued by Krings. Now just looking at the order of who's coming up for Arkansas, it's where all the damage has really been done. Anna Gamble on deck. Then you've got the back-to-back -back homers of Halverson and Carter. Love of catcher Julia Crenshaw pops for strike one. And Miller sends a 12 rows deep. Dyfel said Miller's one of the hardest workers on the team. Her preparation is 
part of what sets her apart. She said she does not have many bad at-bats ever. It's just that recovery, pitch to pitch, at-bat to at-bat. She never gets on that emotional roller coaster of the game. So easy to ride. Took over the starting position early, has not given it up. Two and two. Gamble coming up next, had that hard double to right field, smashed it over the glove of Langer in the second inning. Just foul. It's hard enough to do that in our game. I don't think I really mastered that until my senior year of just disconnecting the way you play from the results. And as a freshman, for Kennedy Miller to step into her first season and do that here at Arkansas is pretty special. Not easy to do, especially for a catcher. Serve foul again, and Miller's been out in front the last two pitches. Sarah Harrison getting loose in the Missouri bullpen. She was our game one starter Friday. Krings gets the pitch, ready for the 2-2. Two -two. Full count. Well, that was close. Gosh, it's, it's been these misses for Krings where they just haven't been as competitive as she's wanting them. If she can raise that ball another, I don't know, maybe a quarter, half of a ball higher on that drop location, she maybe gets the bite there. A pitch of the at-back coming. Back-to-back -back pitches I thought that were very close to touching the zone. Instead, back-to-back -back walks. Ellis trots to second. Miller now at first, and you tell me. You know, this is the off-speed. This is the change-up pitch that Coach Anderson wants at the knees. So where does this ball miss? If she brings it up any higher, it's hammered. I think that's a pitch that's got to be called. That's a strike. That's a strike. Brings now 27 pitches into her relief appearance. Larissa Anderson in the circle and now out. Hawks threatening. They would love some insurance here. Ali Saki comes in now as a pinch runner at second base. Saw her in that same capacity in game one Friday. And a big moment for the hard hitting Hannah Gamble. Makes you hurt for Krings, too, because she's trying to settle in and capture some confidence. She gets the opportunity here in a one-run deficit against Arkansas and just doesn't get the call. Nature of our game, it doesn't always fall your way. Campbell, the senior from BB, Arkansas. 21 hits on the year, 10 of those have gone the distance. Upstairs for ball one. Wind now blowing hard again out towards right. Damn, well, the talk of the town after what transpired in Athens last week. There's a strike. A couple of homers Monday. 8 to 2 win to clinch the series at number three, Georgia. Drove in two in game one on Friday here against Mizzou. Smashed the double we just told you about earlier today. Snaps across for a strike. Home run early in the grand slam late. That was the difference on April 1st against UGA. Well, the celebrations as well. Well, this one. Sequence that Courtney Diefel told us she has watched about 15 times this week. It's giving her chills on each occasion. Saki at second, Miller at first. Two balls and two strikes. Big pitch for Krings on the way. Lofted into right field. That's down for a hit. Saki rounding third. The throw home is cut off. And there is the insurance run for the Hawks. It's three to one. A 
Well, Campbell has gone to right field on both occasions and come up clutch with that A.B. Aces. Cloud comes in, Riley Cloud. Halverson hit the home run, started the scoring party here in game three for Arkansas last time up and fouls off the first pitch here. Eighth home run of the season, hit 10 last year. Nothing in two. On. No two low and away. Now two up for Mizzou in the top of the seventh, eight, nine, and one. Crenshaw set to lead things off. That went drifting into foul territory. That one just early with two strikes. I think she's trying to cover a couple of different speeds in case she sees the off speed from Touche. Arkansas trying to win this series against Mizzou for the first time since 2018. And the one, two down the left field line and that is fair. Cloud comes home to score, the throw back in quickly, and now runners at second and third in Arkansas. Out in front, four to one. A double and a home run. Seeing the ball so well, Halverson from the right side, a swing that just sweeps through the zone with so much ease. This is low and in on the corner and she's able to barrel this ball down the line for another RBI and all of a sudden Arkansas feeling well in control here of this game. Gamble receiving instructions from Courtney Dyfel at third. Halverson standing at second. And here's Carter. First home run of the season, solo shot. Sometimes you don't know how to put on cruise control. Can't say that, I blame her. <laughs> Still only one out. Right back to the circle, and they'll throw home. And a run down ensues. Gamble dives back in at third, and the out is recorded on the tag by Daly. And standing there as well as Halverson. In the midst of all that, Dodge races into second. Two away. Carter in second, rather, in this bring up. Hedgecock. Four to one ball game. The Hawks now with six hits. As Touche comes home, it's one and up. Carter reaches on the fielder's choice. It's a second on the throw. Go one, two, five on the put out. Fly ball shallow left, fair territory, and a nice play by Lair diving down and turning away, grabs it cleanly. Hogs get some badly needed Laird for the time being. And McCann comes in as a pinch hitter to start. Excuse me, Madison Walker. Walker hitting 247 on the year, the freshman from Kansas. In 
inside, and that'll even the count. Tigers would love to get a runner or two aboard and make things interesting. Off speed, upper part of the zone, one and two. Well, you know that this team can do it. The amount of run production you saw last night from them, a 12-run outing for Mizzou, a run rule in five innings. This team has it. They've got the gas in the tank. Line stock, another strikeout. Or seven. Where they've struggled, though, is against line stock. They have not been able to figure out this changeup and the drop ball, the combination that she has put together. The craftiness in the circle from line stock has been lights out. Langer up the middle. Briggy, two away. I don't know who the SEC Pitcher of the Week is going to be after this week, but line stock <laughs> yeah. on the verge of pitching back-to-back -back complete games against rival Mizzou. One more out will get her there, and here comes Courtney Diefel. Her next pitch will be her 100th of the game. And it looks like she's going to make a change. to this crowd and its support. Morgan Linestock. The body of work that she put together between game one and game three already. Seven Ks through six and two third innings. Only gave up five hits. What? Amazing weekend. My gosh. I mean, you mentioned it. I don't know who the SEC Pitcher of the Week is going to be, but I think she's made a pretty darn good case for herself. You get my vote. Robin Herod comes in, the sophomore. We've seen her this weekend, the left-hander from Tampa. A chance to get her some action to close this one down. From the left side, this is just a different release point. Mizzou will have to quickly shift the eyesight. Tigers down to their final out. And it's Jenna Laird at the top of the order trying to keep this game alive. Hawks trying to win their first series against Mizzou since 2018. And out away from doing that. Ball biggest, one to Laird. Biggest change additionally from the left side release point is the fact that she attacks the top of the zone where you're used to line stock challenging low at the knees. She'll spin the ball in your eyes. Beautiful weekend in Fayetteville. Could be a big weekend for the Hawks. One and one. Line stock the story. Home runs from Carter Halverson today. To third, Camel. Arkansas wins it and claims the series against Mizzou. Four to one, our final score. Yeah, oh, uh, yeah, huh. Talk about change and the progress we make In the journey of life, it's the path we take From the old to the new We're never evolving in the cycle of growth We keep revolving, change can be daunting It can make us afraid, but it's also the fuel For the progress we made, through the twists and turns We learn to adapt and embrace the changes Without looking back, change and progress They go hand in hand in the journey
journey of life Where we make our stand with every step forward We leave the past behind In the pursuit of progress in the depths of our mind From the inventions of old to the technologies of today We're constantly innovating in every single way From the streets we walk to the skies we saw Progress is the engine that drives us more But progress isn't always linear It's a winding road with ups and downs and unexpected loads Yet through perseverance and determination strong We push through the challenges where we belong Change and progress, they go hand in hand In the journey of life, where we make our stand With every step forward, we leave the past behind In the pursuit of progress, in the depths of our mind Embrace change and strive for progress Let's remember the journey and all that we possess For in the dance to change And the song of progress will find our purpose And our hearts will digress Yeah In the melody of life let's keep moving on In the pursuits of progress where we belong For in the journey of change And the path we trod will find our way forward To the promise of God